hello and welcome back to the channel. I want to present to you the new Google Causal Impact package that is now available in Python. It is made by the same person who also built the other one that I also have on this channel and also on my Udemy courses. But now the key difference is that the underlying forecasting piece is done with TensorFlow probabilities. And as a result, it also yields very similar results or all the time the same results as the Google Causal Impact package that is available in R. The first thing that I want to do is to install some libraries. So pip install and then y finance and the libraries will install while I also continue with this introduction. So pip install and then tf from TensorFlow Causal Impact. If you're interested in learning more about William Fox, who is the author of this package and also the package on itself, I will leave the link to the GitHub on the comments. And of course, I'll also leave the link for this script also on the comments. And let me put this to run. So control enter. And the case study that we are going to solve, it is about Bitcoin. And back in February 2021, so of the time of that time recording this, so roughly one month ago, there was um, a purchase of Bitcoin by Tesla in which they made, I think, 10% of their cash flow in Bitcoin. And the idea here is, okay, because there's now Tesla as a backer of Bitcoin, did this influence the Bitcoin price? This is what we're going to solve. If you're interested in learning more about my content, I have some Udemy courses where I'll leave the link in the description of this video. So please be sure to check it out. After we install the libraries, then let's import them. So import Y finance as YF, import pandas as PD, and then from causal impact, I want to import causal impact. And here we go. And then what I want to do is to do this part of setup because we need to define dates. Here we go. There'll be a training start. And training start equals two. And over here, I'll just include 2020. Uh, 1201. I'm just looking for this day over day change, and hence I will just have like roughly two months of training, and I think that should be enough. So, training start is this, then we have the training end, and we should be 2021, and then 02, and then 05. So, they bought Bitcoin on the 8th of February, so that's gonna be the treatment start and here we go treatment start equals two and then 20 21 and then zero two and then zero eight and because this was a monday then the sunday and the saturday we don't have any data per se and then as a result the training end has to be the zero five and then let me put some treatment end and I'm going to put 2021, 02, and then 09, so just a couple of days. And then I put end stock, because when I retrieve the stock data, then the last value is omitted. So let me put end stock, and then equals 2. I'm going to put 2021, and then 02, and then 10. This is it for the setup, because now it's time that we get the stock data. And let me start by taking the Bitcoin data. Here we go. And here we go. Let's do y equals 2. And then yf dot download. And then open parenthesis. And then over here, I would include the ticker. So let me also start by writing the ticker. So y equals open the square brackets and then BTC and BTC and then USD and then over here I'll include the Y then start equals and then it is the training start that we have included above 
and then comma then we have an n equals to then it is the n stock which is our 10th of february and then the interval and i want daily data so interval equals two and then i'm going to put one day here we go and then what i also want to do is that this would retrieve a lot of data and what i want is just the adjusted close in fact let me run this immediately and then name yf is not defined so let me correct this one and over here now if i run this what we get is that we have this open eye low close this is a lot of stuff and i don't need this so why and then in single quotes let me put adjusted close and then i'm also going to rename it as bitcoin and here you go let me put here the y as well to see and then we have here we have the adjusted close then we have the name bitcoin and this is it and after this then what we actually need is our control variables and as a result so let me copy all of this and put it here to make the necessary changes let me call it stocks and over here i'll create a list with names so i did several experiments over here i think i tried in general i think close to 40 and i end up with this one some of them will work some of them will not work and this is so that i also show you the general process let me start with carlsberg in honor of my love of beer and let me put salando which is a fashion ecom where i work then let's put square and let's put crisp so cr sp and over here the general idea is that you just need to include what is the ticker name and then everything would actually be retrieved and over here and i'm almost there so just a few more and then the last one would be google and here we go so i'm going to change it also here so stocks and over here i'm going to call it x and then i'll make the changes below because they're a bit more complicated and so stocks then we create our x and let me do x dot hat and here we go and then what we need to do now is that again we have a lot of stuff so there's plenty of transformations so first i just want the adjusted close this is point one uh, point two then this is two levels i want to drop one level and then the second one is that there could be some na's and then i also want to drop the na's so let's make all these data transformations in one and let's start so x equals to x dot i lock and then all the observations and then i want up until and i want just basically the amount of stocks that we have so i'll create something so lens equal to stocks and basically it just counts how many we have here on this list so this is the first step second step is x dot columns and then equals two and then x dot columns and then drop level open parenthesis and then let me put here a small c and then this is basically going to drop this uh, adjusted close so this first level is going to be dropped and then x equals to x dot drop n a and this is going to drop the n a and finally x dot head to have a look at what we get and here we go so we just have a data set with the adjusted close and then we have one column per each of the stocks and then we also have the date and after we do this then it's time that we combine them so data sets and then we do pandas concat and then we combine my y with the x and then axis equals to one and then let's also do drop an a uh, so that in case there are some NAs that are formed from this concatenation, then we're also set. And let's do data set 
dot head to see what we get from here. And here you go. So we start with the Bitcoin and then we have all the other possible control variables. Afterwards, we do the correlation matrix. And this is so that we'll actually pick the variables that are more correlated because if there's no correlation, then the Google causal impact package will also not yield uh, good results. And hence, what we want to do is that we want to start by creating this data frame, which only has the observations up until the end of the training because afterwards then there is a treatment and ideally there is no correlation whatsoever hence we create this data set underscore correlation equals to i go to the data set and then i put data set dot index and then up until the training end super super simple and here we go and let's do data set underscore correlation and then dot tail just to see which one we get and here we go so we get up until the 5th of february which checks out with what we add and now the correlation and here we go and to do this let me do a step by step the first thing is that we want to get rid uh, of the trend because otherwise what can happen is that there can be just a correlation just for the sheer sake that the stocks are increasing and what we want is that there is a correlation among themselves aside from the trend because it can just be a spurious uh, correlation hence we we'll go to the data set underscore correlation and then we can do this fantastic formula which is the percent change open parenthesis let's see what we get and over here we see that immediately that we get this percent change of you know day over day or period over period but we have some NAs and hence we do dot drop NA and here we go and let me take out this one and here now we see that our NAs are gone and then afterwards it's just a matter of doing the correlation and we see that you know unfortunately the correlations are actually pretty pretty weak and we'll take the correlations that are above 0 0.15 which are weak but since in general at least I was not able to find strong correlations what we'll do is that we'll go with quantity rather than quality and as a result, before we go to the causal impact, we'll create this new data set. So data set equals two. And then I go to my data set over here. And then I'm going to retrieve the variable that I want, being that the first one is, of course, uh, Bitcoin. And then I want the Carlsberg as well. So Carl hyphen B dot CO and then comma and then i want the crsp comma then i want the de as well and let me put here a comma and let me put the google as well and then i want square as well so sq and then finally i'm going to put the salanozal dot de and here we go so bitcoin and then we have one two three Four, five, six. So we have six uh, possible controls, which I think, at least just for the sake of this tutorial, is good enough. Next step is to do the causal impact, but first we need to define pre and post period. And the pre period equals two, open the square brackets, and it is my training start and up until the training ends. And then we create the post period, which equals two. And then we do the treatment start up until the treatment end. And here we go. So let me do shift enter because now we do the cause of impact and super, super simple. So impact equals two. We use the causal impact function 
and then here so data equals to the data set and then pre period equals to the pre period and here we go and then finally the post period will be equal to the post period and here we go so after this what we can look would be at the impact dot plot and let's run this it also takes some seconds so i'll just prepare for now the last bit of code after we do or we have a look at the plotting which is to have a look at the summary and print and then we go to the impact and then we just do dot summary and here we go and we see that it has run and over here what we see or what we try to see is whether there is some impact and because the correlation is not so strong unfortunately um, this simply makes it that there is no great overlap between our black which is the actual bitcoin values and this dotted orange which is this what if based on the other stocks nonetheless we see here that there is an increase albeit not statistically significant but let's check it out and we see actually that it is so 0 0.03 is statistically significant which means that at least for the sake and despite our very very poor correlations we actually managed to find a statistically significant impact and then one thing that we can also point out is look at this absolute um, effect now how to actually look at this because this is a price which means that we cannot look at it from a cumulative perspective it does not make sense this is a relative price and then on top the value that i had yesterday plus the one that i had today again does not make sense and as well looking at the average it also does not make sense the value that matters the most is the value of now and hence what i would look would be just this difference between the value that was there at the very beginning which was roughly around the 38k us dollars and then at the very end which was roughly 46 because it's actually quite stable over here so i would say that this 8k so i say that this is around 46 and hence that the impact of tesla investing on this day over day perspective it was around 8k the key thing is that you now learn how to use google causal impact now with this underlying tensorflow capabilities i am looking forward to seeing you in another video and until then have fun